In this three-year-old video, we're going to geek out on a little bit pulse stick welding with Bob Moffat. Just a little bit behind the scenes. The editing is a little bit unconventional. I mean, the footage is over three years old. It's hard to figure out, puzzle all the arc shots together here. But um, it's an interesting topic to see how pulse stick welding works and what we need to do. What's the uh, 200 amp? Yes, 200 amp. So, is this going to be, is it on pulse now? Yes, it is see, on pulse. You see a light there. Now you're about the pulse light here. The pulse is on. Okay. So, what is the background? It's fixed 50. Oh, here. Let me explain to you. The background is fixed at 50%, and the on time is fixed at 50% on okay. this particular machine. So, so, my max is set here at. Your max is set at, at 75. 75. Okay, so, so half, of, half of that half is that. 37 and a half. Yes. Okay, 37 and a half. Man, that's a good background. 75 is too high, I think. But oh, I can, you can you can be lower if you want to be for and for pipes or 70, 16, 70, 18. Yes, 70, 16, and and for pipes where we would run 60, 10, they run Cetoflex. They run what? Cetoflex. The hell's that? This is like a Cetoflex is like a 60, 10, but it's even harder on the inverter to run it. it you know how some inverters don't like oh, 60, God. 10? Yeah. Cetoflex is even worse. It's a wow. cellulosic rod. I mean, uh, I'm just going to run just to see what this looks like. Yeah, just run. Yes. Uh, you know, I'm going, well, how the fuck am I supposed to do this? 
supposed to fit inside of a piece of six inch pipe you know, in the background. You know, you guys want, you guys want all background stuff. I don't know if I can manipulate this. I will. I'm gonna go up for it. That it works. That inverter squeal you hear here, that is with high amounts of arc force. It's like the signature noise that the cell inverters make. Now we made a mill scale. And if you stuck a grinder on here, what would you do? Well, the first thing you do would be cutting into your material. If you're doing outside quarter joints, projects and stuff, you want them to look nice, right? Yeah. Well, then you don't want to be grinding on it. And if you stick a, if you put a flapper disc on, yeah, it works for a little bit and then it glazes over. It glazes over. over, yeah. glazes over. Yeah, and then you got to cut. Well, you run this shit low speed. Like a hard, like a hard wheel will, the hard wheel will, will uh, screw it up and the flapper disc will glaze over. Oh yeah, I mean so you, you can flat grind, flat, flat grind flat sand, but yeah. uh, So here's where Bob schools me on $270 or $300 per uh, wire brush, wire brushes with diamond solder on them. And it makes an absolutely nice finish just like sandblasted. I had to buy one of those, it's absolutely impressive. I'm gonna try to go and get Buy it, sit down. Huh? No, it's okay, I'm just yelling at my door.
buy a machine because of duty cycle. I mean, those are the ones that really don't understand it. You know, they're, they're talking about uh, you're going to change up. The majority of the people, they're not going to work a machine that hard to begin with. You know? But that's the horsepower buyer, the spec sheet reader. You know, how much, how much horsepower does it have? What amps does it have? What duty cycle does it have? The, the real thing on a stick machine, or on any welding machine for that matter, it's like arc dynamic. There's no spec sheet in the world that will tell you what your arc dynamic is going to look like. Mm -hmm. You notice I'm working yeah, hard. Yeah, on that BB. Yeah, what happens, oh, that guy right there? That happens oh, when I'll, everything I'll, goes I'll cold. Yeah. Yeah. But I was trying to run you know, close to the edge. Because I was trying to trying to gauge that, and really trying to make the same size. I was hoping I wouldn't end up with a big V in there. Uh, yeah, that's pretty impressive. I mean, the thing is still chirping at me. They're just trying to cool off, and that's it. Will that's it's fine. a it's a four minute. Yeah. It's it's well, a four minute mandatory shutdown. Yeah, you know, I think that's uh, it. Had you know when it was running, like right in through here. Uh, I'm looking at the back side of the pool, away, way away from the rod. I'm looking at seeing how much the, the spatter and popping. The, the well pool is not exploding, so it's nice and smooth. Wow, that was, uh, was kind of impressive for a little bit. How, was, how much does that weigh? Go ahead and turn this back on. No. Yeah. No, you're good. Yeah, anyway. Uh, so what I like to do here, and again, this is a personal preference, but I'm not one to weave outside the groove. I, I, don't, I don't like it. And I don't want to leave undercut. So I'm going to establish the arc in my pool and I'm going to come right over here. I like to pause and I actually like to touch. I like to push just a little bit right in here on this bevel face. If I can do that without snubbing out the arc, uh, I, I just, I kind of do a very slight lazy triangle. Uh, I'll do a pronounced one. I'm over here on this side. I come up slightly. I come down. I come straight across. And, and I'm not watching the rod. I'm actually looking down below the rod. This is what I need to do a whole video on this sometime. I'm actually looking right down here. This is where I'm looking. Uh, and I train a lot of people. I have a lot of students in here. When I finally get them to realize where the weld pool is and they're looking down here, then they start manipulating the rod correctly on their travel speed. I also see a lot of people that come over here at the side. They're here, and they go diagonally up quite yeah, a bit. Yeah, that Christmas tree shape. And then right. you have all sorts of inclusions and voids uh, in the weld. Good, yeah. You know, there's undercut and there's underfill. Yes, so, so when, when, what I found out with the rods, when you first go over to the side, the first second, I want to say, it just carves, and the second second, it fills. Right. You know, so you need to stay long enough on the sides in order to what you carved out first to fill it back in. If you move too fast, if you don't stay long exactly. enough on each side. Exactly. And it, you know, and then there's some rods that they actually they actually penetrate pretty hard. I mean, if you watch them, uh, you know, some people would run too cold on an eighth inch seventy eighteen or something. Actually, when you turn it up, it forces itself into the material uh, better. You know. Again, short, steady arc. You can't long arc. As soon as you long arc, uh, you're pretty much done because gravity is going to take a hold of that uh, liquid well pool and going to run it downhill. You know, I grew up in the day, all the books, all the books, the motion says to do this. And it also says to point the rod way up, you know. Like uh, a push no, 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 no. I, I found out after, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I got hacked off at my instructor. It just doesn't, it doesn't work. And a lot of times I can take somebody, if they're struggling with this, I'll take them over to a MIG machine that has no, no slag or anything around it, and I'll do the same thing, and I'll do that and make them watch the pool only down below the wire. And, it, and then it makes sense to them, and they come right back over here on the stick, and they pretty much nail it. So progress here. Watch your eyes.
See, I mean, if you think about it, we're not really efficient. We ran a whole 78, 332, and that is quite a bit to feel. This is the eight inch type. But again, we're trying to slow down and show some, some stuff that the machine will do here. A little bit of a tuck, a little bit of a tuck. Again, that's you know, it's carrying too much. One more hot pass. Or I could have slowed down on my hot pass. You brought that up and I... Uh, is it European machine? Yes, European built well, machine. I think we ought to run some European 7018, don't you think? Let's do that. Let, let me grab one. It's going to be an 8 bit. <laughs> so this is a <clears throat> UTP 7018. UTP 614 is the numbering system on it. Uh, a couple things unique with it. It's got kind of a graphite end. It's pretty easy to start. My experience with this rod is it runs a little less amperage than uh, normal 7018 we get here in the States. At the end of this thing is like a missile. I mean, it's, 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 uh, I want to say it's gouging, but I'm saying it's, uh, it's throwing it in there pretty good. And the other unique thing about it is it produces a, a black, shiny glass. And you're going to think, well, I can't even see your weld tool. But I'm going to run this. So I'm going to...